Hi everyone, welcome to the another video of uh, REST API testing by using the TestSig module. Okay, so in my previous video, we have gone through how to create a REST API testing, uh, I mean test cases or test suites uh, in the test sigma on the cloud version. Okay, so you can sign up to the test sigma cloud, which is free for a limited uh, time duration or minutes we have. You can execute the test cases for the minutes. Uh, after that, we have seen how to create the REST APIs and how we can execute them and how do we validate what are the REST API methods are available. I mean, the API request, right? So like we have seen post, get, put, patch, delete, everything is available. And we have seen how to use the parameters and we have seen how to set the body, request body. And the headers also we have seen authorization types, right? So we have basic authorization, no authorization, API key. And we have all the authorization type like OAuth 2.0, Right, everything we have and barrier token everything. And we have seen the couple of verifications. So, how do we validate our status code? Or if you want to validate something on the response side, you can write the assertion statement in the verification tab also. And we have seen something like a stored variable where if you want to take some variables from the response and if you want to share that particular variable through the subsequent request, that is also possible. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about. Uh, how to store the variable and how we can use those use those variables throughout our test cases. Okay, which means the subsequent, for example, I'm creating a post method from the post. I'm reading the response. I have to store some value that I have to use being, I have to use upon my subsequent request. That is also possible by using the store variables method. I mean store variables option in the test sigma. Okay. So let me go to the test sigma. So as soon as you log in, I mean, first you have to do the sign up. If you don't have account, you can sign up and you will get the account like this. So this is what dashboard. So here, if you just click on this, this is my project. Okay, there are a lot of uh, free default uh, or preloaded projects also available. If you want to create one, you can create one new one. Okay, so this is my uh, project which I have created. And if you go here, uh, this is the dashboard. And when you go to the test development, right? So this is a place where you can write your test cases and you can create your test plan and test suites. Everything. So this is a test case that we have created yesterday. So I'm just going inside this. So this is a get method and yesterday we have seen, right? So when I click on this edit tab, so nothing, it is very straightforward. It is similar to how do you use the other API tools for the API testing. You can see the get method, post method, everything is available under the API request tab. And we have something called verification where you can add your assertion statement or verification statement and stored variables also available. Okay, so now in the API request, uh, these are the parameters. It is same applicable across all the applications that you have used for the API testing. So when I send the request, so we are getting the response as a JSON format. You have different format view also. You can go for HTML or text format also. So when you go for outline, okay, so this is a place where you can store your variable. Okay. The store variable also, you don't want to write any code. I mean, still you can write a code by using the JSON part, you can write a code. But they have given this, I mean, a very easy button to click to store the variable. Okay, so for example, uh, if I go here, you can see this is a first name. Okay, this is first name. When I click on the store variable, you can see the variable is getting added over here. Okay, so that is what I have done here. So this is my first name. That is by using the JSON path, right? So this is a JSON path to take the first name of the this particular value. Okay, I have renamed those variable name as per my convenient. I have renamed as a first name. Okay, similarly, I have taken the email and the last name also. So wherever you want to store the variable, you just mouse over here. You can see it is coming the store variable and add verification, right? So this is applicable only on the outline tab. Okay, if you are looking for this option, the JSON, it will not come. This is applicable only on the outline tab. Okay, so for all the things you can add the store, I mean, you can store the variable or you can add the validation. I mean, verification, okay? So these are the three variables I have stored. Okay, I want to use for my further or subsequent request. I want to pass this value like first name, email, last name, everything. Okay, these are the variables, I mean, variables I have stored in the verification. I, I, I mean, I'm just doing this page number is coming as a two one, some texts are coming. And when I go to the state, this is a header validation, okay? So when, when you go for a verification, you have a response body verification, header verification, as well as the status. Okay, the status is coming as a 200, or the response time is coming as a, a less than 300, or what the response size, everything you can have. This is all about the status related. And this is a header related, and this is a response part. Okay, 
this is all about verification and when you go for a store variable so you can store your variable by going to outline tab whatever the value that you want to store you can store okay so once this is done you can manually also store the variable so when you click on this button you can see something is created so you can use this one also okay so i just want to show you the automated way of storing a variable and, and passing through the subsequent records that is what i'm doing okay so just click on update okay my first request is ready which i am reading the first name last name and email okay so those three things or those three variables i want to pass it to the my next method which is a post method okay so when i go to the post method so this is a post method i have selected as a post request here and when i go to the body here you can see i am using those variables in the format of dollar symbol and you have to put a pipe symbol and the variable name exactly what you have given in the request one okay i mean the variable name that you have used to do store your value okay this is the first name and last name email those are coming from my previous request which i have stored my variable okay so this is what this is how you have to use okay you have to put a dollar symbol and a pipe symbol following with the name i mean the variable name and to close the pipe symbol okay and again also i have added a couple of verification so whatever the name that is i'm getting right so when i send this request so i'm going here so when you send this this will not work okay you can see it is going as it is okay these variables will work only on the run time it will not work for the instant request okay if you send it as an instant request then it will come like this okay so it will work only on the run time so in the verification what i have done so whatever the name that being passed here right so that the same name is coming from the verification the response also i am going to validate here okay so here you can see the expected value i am not hard coded this is also i am reading it from the stored variable so wherever you want to use the variables you have to use like this dollar symbol pipe line i mean pipe symbol with the variable name and close pipe okay so let's do the update here okay i don't want to run this so i am going to disable this use case i mean this particular step i am going to disable it okay i am going to execute only these two so in the get method i am i am storing the variables on the runtime first name last name and email i am passing the same those three variables in my post body request okay i am going to execute now okay it is running now let's see okay it got executed and you can see there are two one failures and one is passed okay my get method is passed so if i click on this uh, view detail one okay so under the verification you can see this is also passed but this is also passed and the getter also passed and the status also passed there is one test case which is failing as a post method so if i go to the view detail one okay okay here you can see the body went as a michael and the last name went as a Lawson and the email also it is coming. So where it is coming? This is coming from my previous request. So if I go to this body here, you can see I have used as a variable, right? So that those variables are working fine. Okay. So what was the verification is failed here? Actual value. Okay. I I didn't give the actual value here. That's the reason it is got failed. Okay. Let me give the actual value here. First name. Let me copy. So when you click on runtime, uh, these are the variables that I have stored. So I'm just clicking on the first name. okay i think it is currently not taking so let me come out okay correctly stored as a first name
oh here it is not a name this is first name that's the reason it got picked okay so this value also i'm reading it from my stored variable so let me do the update there was a issue with the json path i have corrected now so let me run it again Okay, I think this time both test cases are executed and it is both are passed. Okay. So let's see the results. Okay, this is the first one. So, I mean, we don't have any any uh, stored variables here. I mean, we have stored the variables that is taking from runtime, you can see. So here the first name is coming as a Michael, right? The last name is coming as a Lawson and this is a email. So these all three values are got stored here. This is what we are going to use in our subsequent review, which is a post method, correct? So if I go to the post method here, you can see in the request body, right? In the request body, it went as a Michael Lawson, and this is a Michael Lawson, the email. Okay, so if I go to the verification here, you can see this time it got passed, right? This actual value, we have set the expected value as a variable, correct? So this is working fine. So here I don't have stored any variables. So this is how you have to store the variables on the runtime. Okay, that you can pass through the, the subsequent request to your test cases. Okay, so let me uh, disable these two. Okay, so in last test case, I mean, in the last video, I have explained about the request body. So here, you can send your files also. Okay, so this is one, one use case for the file upload. The file upload usually we'll do with the Farm data are binary. Okay, so here I'm going to do upload the file. I'm just giving the file name. Okay, so just click on upload file. Okay, I'm uploading some random file. So when I click on send here, you can see this, this status code is coming as a 200. Everything is fine. Okay, so this is one way of uploading your file. I mean, so we do file upload and download also, right? So that is also being supported in the test sigma. And if you go to the binary, so let me delete this. Yeah. So you can you can do via farm data also, or you can do via the binary also. So I'm just going to the binary option. So here also I'm uploading the file. So when I send this, this is also working. Okay, if I go to the status code, you can see, oh, it is not working. I, okay, entity too large. Okay. okay, let me try to upload some simple file. Okay, let me upload this. Okay, this is working fine. You can see it is coming as a 200 status. Okay, so this is how we upload the files uh, in the test sigma to validate the post method or file download also you can do. Okay, so these are the things I just want to uh, share it to the team. So everything, everything, I mean, you can do as uh, only in the cloud version right now. And there are a lot of features also coming. Uh, so there are a couple of features. I mean, still they are working on it. So I'm also excited to see all the new features that is coming to the test sigma to, to make our API testing very easy with no code or no code code. Okay, so here the verification part is very easy. You don't want to write any JSON path for your explicit right test cases. It is auto-generated, right? So when you go to inside this, so when you send this request, so the response is coming. So the moment when you go to the outline, you can see easily you can store it as a variable. You don't want to write a code. Okay, you can add the verification. Again, this is using the JSON path. So if you go to get the verification, you can see this is using a JSON path. Okay. So store the variable or verification, anything is fine. Okay, so this is what I want to uh, share, uh, how we can store the variables and how we can pass among through the, the subsequent request. Okay, and we have seen how to upload the files also. That is also supported by the test sigma in the API test. Okay, so let's uh, stay tuned for the further further uh, announcements or future that is coming to the test sigma. We'll try to make a video of uh, new features and enhancements also. Also, okay. So that's all about this video. Uh, thank you, guys.